Don't you know that not listening to the Shenmu AM2 podcast is way uncool? Welcome back to another episode of the Shenmue AM2 podcast. We're your hosts, Andrew. And Matt. And we are here for a second round of some character profiles from Shenmue 1. Uh, we're taking these out of the Prima official, Prima's official strategy guide. <laughs> Excuse me. Woo. <laughs> we're not going to cut that. <laughs> That's staying. That was a good sneeze. Uh, so we're going to each, we've each uh, gone through the guide and picked five characters uh, to do a little profile on. We try to pick interesting ones. I just kind of go through. I know Matt does the same. You know, read a little bit about them, and if we think it'll be a good, you know, chat, comedy <laughs> gold. <laughs> well, we yeah, both... the, la- the last episode we did of this uh, turned out really well, so it We're was fun. Having a hoot. Um, do you want to go first? Do you want me to go first? Hmm, doesn't matter. All right, I got my, my page open here. Uh, my first character we're going to talk about is Mr. Kim Sheehan. Role. Grumpy Fisherman. Uh, gender male, height 5'7", blood type AB, he's a Libra, age 34, 148 pounds, and his date of birth is September 28th. This middle-aged fisherman can often be found at the harbor. He seems to be Korean, but his background is unknown. His last name's Kim. <laughs> he's definitely Korean. His first name's Kim. Huh? His first name's Kim. Oh, okay. Hmm, I don't know. <laughs> and way to just paint that with a broad brush. <laughs> uh, when he meets uh, Marai-san, or Kudasan as a fishing spot, they exchange greetings, but he seldom talks to anyone. It is rumored that he is the president of a Korean company and is taking an extended vacation here. Hmm. However, the truth is unknown. The truth is out there. <laughs> they really want to put some... Uh, Myst- some mystery around this guy. I know. There's a lot of characters like that. They're either mysterious or tragic figures. All of them. <laughs> Everybody living in town. I. Uh, yeah, I don't. I. He seems to be Korean. Hmm. It, what? <laughs> He's just got like a jacket with Korean flag on the back and everything. <laughs> think he might be Korean. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think you would be Korean. Because his name is Kim Sheehan, and generally people of of uh, Korean descent have three very short three or four letter names, and he does not have that. Sometimes, um, there's a uh, there's some Korean characters in um, King of Fighters. One's named Kim Kafwan, uh, and I believe Kim is his last name, but they always say Kim Kafwan, so it's you know the reverse thing and there's another character named Choi his name is Choi Bouge 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 B-O-U-G-E <laughs> however you say that in Korean so it's not always like like three little names but yeah and yeah and they may have it reversed he could be uh, Kim could be his last name hmm. I wonder why he's so grumpy though is he not <laughs> catching fish probably not we should watch him someday and see if he catches anything he does have a weird haircut, too. Oh, he's grumpy because he got a bad haircut. <laughs> yeah. He should go see, whatchamacallit, from the last episode. Mm-hmm. He'll get the crew cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, That's it. No more, no less. <laughs> yeah. Uh, who's, your, uh, who's your first person? Mine is one of my favorite characters to impersonate. Uh, the guy who's like... I'm drunk. That guy? <laughs> he, what is he like? One more time? <laughs> I'm just fine and dandy. I'm okay. <laughs> Anyways, his name is Su- Suyoshi Takashima, and his role, classic <laughs> drunk. <laughs> Gender male, age 56, weight 146 pounds, uh, height 5'3", oh, he's short. Um, blood type B, birth date, Uh, November 4th. Zodiac sign Scorpio. And uh, Suyoshi is a middle-aged man whose ambition as a young man was to be an actor. 
However, his poor acting ability only allowed him to get minor <laughs> roles in which he was invariably killed. <laughs> I like how he wanted to be an actor. However, he was bad. He was bad. All his characters died. Uh, although his roles were only minor, he had a chance to appear with some of the more famous actors of that era. But he doesn't like to boast about it. Nowadays, he always pretends to be drunk, which is probably the best acting he's ever done. This dude's not actually drunk. <laughs> This whole time, the game's been lying to me. You can't figure this stuff out unless you read the strategy guide, people. <laughs> it's crazy. Why does he pretend to be drunk? <laughs> What's that get him? Why not? <laughs> He's pretending. That blew my mind. <laughs> I like how you kept that secret from me till right now. <laughs> What's your next one? I am looking for it. It <laughs> is... Uh, Lu Tang Chen. He is an extra, male, 5'10, blood type B, Sagittarius. He's in Del Buita. He is 35 years old, 155 pounds, and December 19th. This is a man in a suit who is always standing in front of Nagai Industries. <laughs> Actually, Lu Tang Chen wishes to become a member of Nagai Industries because he is attracted. Uh, by their noble image. Mm -hmm. He left his hometown, Lushan, China, and smuggled himself into Japan 15 years ago, uh, so he also speaks fluent Japanese. Once he had connections with the Chinese cartel, uh, but being a man of old-fashioned integrity, he couldn't accept their way of thinking, for they had no rules of honor. When Tang Chen learned about the Japanese concept of Nikkyo Du, the Yakuza chivalry, he decided... Uh, he had to join. Tang Chen is always asking himself how he can improve his image. As a result of this self-assessment, he came to rely on two concepts. One is men should be strong. Although Tang Chen is strong, he abhors violence. His other concept is men should be patient. Tang Chen will keep standing there regardless <laughs> of the weather until the day Nagai will accept him. So the dude doesn't even work for them. You think he's a bodyguard, but he's just a poser. <laughs> he's a wannabe. Yeah, he's just... He... Uh, determined. Well, yeah, he's determined. He's determined. He's got aspirations. Good for him. Yeah, I, I would... Minus the whole crime thing, he's... Noble crime. <laughs> yeah. Noble. That's why he likes them. They're like, they must be Robin... Uh, like a whole pack of Robin Hoods. <laughs> Except they keep the money themselves and they probably... Right. Kill tons of people. <laughs> Oh, there's tons of corpses with cement shoes at the bottom of the harbor from their uh, their handiwork. Mark's Kimberly's brother. Huh. Oh, too soon, oh, too that soon. Was the Mad Angels. Don't pin it on on the uh, whatever industries, the guy industries. Uh, my next one is Tatsuya Yamamoto. He uh, roll gotcha gotcha fan, <laughs> male, age seven. <laughs> <laughs> Weight, 77 pounds. Birth date, February 24th. Height, 311. Like the band. Uh, blood type A. <laughs> Zodiac sign, Pisces. Uh, Tatsuya has very strict parents who nag him endlessly about his studies, so he goes out often and comes back late, which makes his parents even angrier. His monthly allowance from his parents is only 500 yen. So he doesn't waste money. He can't afford to try the capsule. To he can't afford to try the capsule toy machine, his favorite pastime, next to eating snacks. So he always tries to persuade Rio and any other adults he knows to give him money. He sometimes flatters Nozomi and Mayumi to finagle money out of them. Sly examples include him saying, "Rio said you were cute" to Ma Mayumi, and then pestering her for money. <laughs> when Rio found out, he scolded Tatsuya severely. But the young boys never learned his lesson. Ryo sympathizes with him a bit because he also liked capsule toy machines when he was a child. <laughs> Come on, Ryo. <laughs> uh, but Iwao didn't give him enough money for it either. Still, Ryo worries about Tatsuya because he shows no interest in making friends and is more concerned with trying to get prizes. So he's basically you <laughs> with the capsule toy obsession. <laughs> <laughs> he's, yeah, he's little Ryo. <laughs> No, he's you. Me. Yeah, you gotta collect every single damn capsule toy in the game. Oh, yes. <laughs> so Have uh, I told you how nice you look today, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can I have some money? <laughs> Can I have hundred yen? <laughs> uh, <sighs> so yeah, that's that little kid who's always outside of that Abe store, I believe. And always pesters you. He's just uh 
no morals. He get a job, kid. <laughs> get a job. Yeah. Go hang out inside the guy industry. <laughs> Yeah, um, that, was, that one was a good one. Uh, my next one is Mary Yamashita, newsstand clerk, female, five foot three, uh, blood type B. She's a Scorpio. She's at the Harbor Recreation Center, age 23, 104 pounds. November 8th is the birthday. Dreaming of becoming a singer since she was in the second grade, Mari once won a children's singing competition during, excuse me, the Bonn Dance Festival organized by the Dubuita Council. Her singing voice is pretty good, however, her parents don't understand her dream. Oh, Mary often attends auditions without telling her parents. So far, she has never gotten past the preliminaries. Oh. Optimistic and cheerful, nevertheless, Mary still believes that a talent scout will discover her someday. To facilitate this happening, she goes to Takeshita Street, Harajuku, every month. When she turned 20 years old, her mother began nagging her to get a life. Oh, and hurry up and get married. Wow, bad parents. <laughs> Shitting all over her dreams. Uh, so she started working at the New Harbor branch of the Tomato Convenience Store. She wants to continue her singing lessons uh, by using part of her salary. Since er, she often screams... What? She often screams at the sea as a form of uh, strengthening her singing voice after she finishes her shift. Her biggest concern is the age limit for auditions. Increasingly, she has been refused entry because of her age. She hopes her dream of becoming a singer is realized before she becomes 30 years old. Because your life is over at that point. <laughs> hey, Susan Boyle. Someone tell her about Susan Boyle. <laughs> That's a sad story. Mm-hmm. Way to just have parents that don't support you. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Well, <laughs> I didn't have this guy, but I'm going to read a bonus one right now because it's short and it's also parents. <laughs> terrible parents. <laughs> Kiyosuke Nishida. I just noticed this one. Roll, naughty boy. <laughs> Age six. Gender male. Height, four one. Weight, 84 pounds. Birth date, March uh, 9th. Blood type A, Pisces. Kiyosuke was the boy whose toy plane hit Akio... Akio Inoki. Being a spoiled child, he knows nothing about manners. He actually lives outside Sakura Gaoka, but likes to venture there to play. It seems he has dinner alone all the time because his parents are working, leaving him very isolated. He's a six-year-old boy who has to fend for himself and make his own dinner and eat alone. <laughs> Sounds pretty naughty to me. <laughs> That's terrible. Roll, naughty boy. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you say it in like a Jamaican accent? Uh, I Naughty boy. Bra, bra, bra. I wasn't trying to do that. <laughs> Naughty boy. Um, I don't know what accent I was trying to do, but it wasn't Jamaican. <laughs> um, okay, the next one I had was Mayumi Mishima, Megumi's sister, Ryo's old classmate. This is the girl that the the uh, little boy told that Ryo thought she was cute. Ooh. <laughs> um, female, age 18, weight 106 pounds, birth date November 24th. Height 5'4", blood, blood type B, Zodiac, Sagittarius. Mayumi went to the same school as Ryo from kindergarten to junior high. She has known Ryo longer than Nozomi, partly because their houses are close. She didn't notice her feelings for Ryo until she entered a highly competitive girls' school and was separated from him. Rather passive by nature, she feels nervous when in the company of both Ryo and Nozomi, as she knows how Nozomi feels for Ryo. She tries to keep some distance from Ryo, as she would rather stay friends than confess her love to him. Anyway, she is occupied with entrance exams at the moment. She is dreaming of becoming a diplomat, but to do so she must study hard and enter University of Foreign Languages and learn Chinese. She sometimes walks around Dobuita, and if she comes across Ryo, let alone if he speaks to her, she is happy for the rest of the day. I had no idea there was this person who was so obsessed with Rio. She'd be crushing hard. Yeah. <laughs> like, with, I don't know if the game gives you any indication that she's, like, just pining for you. But, like, <laughs> she's, yeah. She, Rio. Rio's, like, all she thinks about. Go after some freaking hot sisters. <laughs> Megumi's sister. Yeah. Well, I, I'm curious if there's any lines in the game that Hold, illustrate is it, that. Is it Nozomi's sister? No, it's Megumi's sister. Megumi's uh, older sister. Oh. Okay, yeah, I thought it was Nozomi's sister. No. I don't think she has a sister, does she? Yeah, that was weird when I said hot sister then, because <laughs> Megumi's a child. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, she wants Ryo yep. bad. I, there's, there's, like, this whole love triangle, but 
Nozomi and Ryo don't even know they're in a love triangle. <laughs> Ryo, you missed a hundred percent of the opportunities that you don't take. Yeah. He doesn't care. <laughs> I think I'll buy another. My next one is Motoyuku Motoyuki Aoki, the manager of Funny Bear Burgers. <laughs> Male, 5'6", blood type A. He's an Aquarius. He's at Funny Bear Burgers, of course. 34, 137 pounds, not too bad for running a burger joint. Mm -hmm. And February 15th. Uh, This ex-banker started a hamburger shop after resigning from the bank he joined after college. In the early days of the shop, Maido Yuki was just an amateur. But he became quite skilled and eventually won the All Japan Hamburger Championship (laughs) amateur category. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Put that on the mantle. Yeah. Unfortunately, his marketing skills aren't so good. <laughs> marketing <laughs> skills aren't great. I won the amateur <laughs> burger thing. I will name this the amateur burger. <laughs> unfortunately, his, I like how they just immediately... Unfortunately, so we're taking a turn for the words here. Yeah. His marketing skills aren't so great, so no matter how much he invests in developing new products, most wind up failing. Oh. His ex-boss from the bank where he used to work supplied the startup and running capital for his shop. It seems he knows something about his ex-boss that gives him some leverage over him. Oh, God. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> what? There's just hamburger blackmail lore in this game. <laughs> yeah, hamburger blackmail. Uh, like, uh, Is that the end of that one? Yes, but <laughs> why? 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 <laughs> I love these backstories. I know. He just, he's holding something over his boss's head and be like, man, you gotta, you gotta invest more. You gotta fund my burgers. Or else. Yeah. Oh, man. Your son. <laughs> That's, oh my god, that is awesome. My next one is Shigeo Yamagishi. Uh, Yamagishi-san. Uh, the guy who's like, that driver was insane. That guy. <laughs> that guy. And to make matters worse, I fell over. Um, <laughs> Have you ever said, thought of getting a job doing impressions? <laughs> no. <laughs> you should. One more time. That time. That driver was insane. <laughs> um, roll. Old soldier. Gender male. Age 75, weight 150 pounds, birth date February 27th, blood type AB, height 57, Pisces. Shigeo was born in Itabashi, Tokyo, and is well versed in traditional martial arts. With a strong affection for the martial arts from childhood, he trained until he was drafted into the military shortly after turning 30. Oh, just when your life ends. <laughs> um, he was sent to, he was sent with the Kanto Army to the front lines. Due to his knowledge of communication techniques, developed while working at a manufacturer of Morse code generators, he was used on various missions, including decoding Chinese and Russian codes, as a technical officer. When the war was over, he married and moved to Sakuragaoka as his, at his wife's urging because she loved the cherry trees there. Uh, they even planted a cherry tree in their home garden. When his wife died, he cut it down, trying to break the link with his past, but now he seems to regret doing so. Ine-san has long been a close acquaintance of Shigeo. This friendship has deepened since his wife died. He now harbors feelings of affection for Ine-san, but he avoids showing her these feelings, instead often treating Ine-san and Ryo with indifference. (laughs) Years ago, when Shigeo became acquainted with with Iwao, uh, the master of Hazuki Dojo, he restarted his training again. Iwao and Shigeo developed a close friendship and always drank sake together after their practices. Shigeo stopped training again after he hurt his back. He is very strict about manners and behavior, even with the children gathering around the Abe store. He has often scolded Ryo in the past for various reasons. So, there's another secret admirer in this game. The lore. It's so deep. (laughs) This lore goes deep. I think he might have killed Iwa. Oh, God. Why? Is Iwao, uh, Iwao, uh, was he uh, Ine-san's lover? Are they? I don't think so. <laughs> I thought she was just a housekeeper. Oh, I, thought, I always kind of thought that was implied. Hmm. Could be. I don't know. That's another game for another time. <laughs> Shenmue Zero. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, what's your last one? Uh, my last one is Setsu Abe, <laughs> the owner 
It doesn't say owner of Abe store. It says owner of the candy shop. <laughs> She'll let you lick the lollipop. No, just kidding. Okay. Uh, she's female. Only 5'1". Uh, blood type B. Sagittarius. She's at Abe store, of course. Age 75. Mm-hmm. Uh, 106 pounds and rocking a birthday of November 24th. Setsu resided in Manchuria with her husband, Tomokichi, who was a school teacher during the Japanese occupation of the pre-war period. When they tried to return to Japan during the war, Tomokichi and Setsu were separated in the confusion of the evacuation. Finally, Setsu arrived in Tokyo, but her husband, or excuse me, but her ho- house had been burnt down and she couldn't locate her parents. Wow. Uh, so she headed for Yokosuka, where Tomokichi, Tomokichi's parents lived. Although their house remained standing, Tomokichi's parents were missing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Setsu decided to settle there in the event that her husband or his parents might return. She opened a small candy store in the uh, entrance hall of the house. She's been running this small shop alone aww, ever uh-huh. since. Every day for the past 40 years, she prepared a meal for two in the hope that her missing Tomokichi might one day come home. <laughs> Although... <laughs> it's okay, Matt. <laughs> Although she lives alone, she enjoys the company of the children coming to her shop for candy and snacks. The past few years have been her uh, have seen her growing increasingly more senile, and she imagines there is a connection between herself and Rio, like that of a mother and a son. Much of Rio's chagrin, or much to Rio's chagrin, she doesn't acknowledge the fact that he has grown and always treats him like a little boy. Baby boy, Rio. That's why I looked this up, was she always calls him... Like, refers to him as a child. Yeah. And then I just thought she was being funny. She's going insane. She's senile. It's sad. That is a remarkably sad story. Her whole life was sad. Oh. You can hear my tears. I have a tear basin. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um... <laughs> yeah, that w- I had that one too, actually, and then I noticed that you grabbed it. So... <laughs> So, yeah, that's just incredibly sad. And uh, you should feel even worse because you didn't even know she had a store for most of your game time with Shenmue. Never found that store. Maybe that meal was for me. The meal? Maybe this is a misconnection. She was just waiting for you to find her store so you could buy her candy. I feel bad now. Yeah, you should. Well, I mean, she should. Like, the... It even says in there that the, the the front of the store or the store is just the front of a house. So I, I really feel. Can we share the tear basin? Okay, go ahead. Just one tear. That's all you had. <laughs> um, what was your last? My last one. I'll have to go with the backup. Uh, is Yuji Hirano. Younger classmate at Rio's high school. Age 16, gender male, height 5'9", weight 141 pounds, blood type B, birth date uh, April 23rd, zodiac sign Taurus. Yuji lives in Sakuragaoka uh, lives in Sakuragaoka and has an older sister, Minako, who is a student at a women's college. He doesn't fantasize about nor have many expectations of girls because he was brought up with a sister who acts one way in front of the family and then completely differently, pretending to be ladylike, in front of boys. <laughs> so I just imagine like his sister's like just the grossest woman ever and then like a boy comes around and she's like all prim and proper. But he knows that women are actually disgusting. <laughs> uh, he feels awkward when it comes to girls. Oh, he feels awkward when girls come up to a- to him to ask, Do you know what kind of girl Ryo likes? He has mixed feelings because he, re- he respects Ryo as a strong and cool guy, but he often feels second-rate in comparison. What? <laughs> That's the first time I've heard anyone refer to Ryo as cool. <laughs> yeah. Watching the way his sister acts, he can't help thinking that college would be useless. Instead, he wishes to live like Ryo, who has a firm objective. Murder. Uh, <laughs> Uh, because he has no particular interest at the moment, Yuji frequents the arcade on his way home, leaving the difficult thinking till later. Uh, maybe he and his sister think similarly, though they are not aware of it. So, Ryo has an admirer of a different kind. <laughs> Just like, he wants to model his life after him, basically. There is so much weird lore. Mm-hmm. We're definitely doing a part three. <laughs> part There's... four. We're going to milk this dry. Yeah. Well, people need to know about all this lore. I mean, they put the effort into making it. People should know about it. Like, I didn't know all this shit. 
There's, and that's, there's no way to know half of this guy. That's stuff. the thing. If you didn't use the passport disc mm. or don't have these strategy guides, yeah, most of this is not necessarily brought up in the game. Mm-hmm. Yep, it's it's pretty it's pretty impressive. I say how how many unique stories they came up with. It's great, and like some of them intertwine and stuff. It's a uh, a lot of work that was put into it, you can tell. Mm. So you can find us on the you can find us on the social medias. We are you can find us on the social medias. We are Shenmu Am Two Pod on Twitter, Shenmu Am Two Podcast at Gmail dot com, Shenmu Am Two Podcast on Facebook. We have a page in the group and YouTube dot com slash Shenmu Am Two Podcast. Remember to like, subscribe, thumbs up, all that good stuff. We'd like to thank our sponsor this week, the Dairy Farmers of Yokosuka. Milk. Perfect for a schoolboy and a kitten. Thanks, guys. Thanks.